Joining us this morning is former FBI Director James Comey. He has a new book out. It's called A Higher Loyalty, and it hits, uh, it did hit shelves, uh, store shelves yesterday. And uh, welcome to WTOP, Director Comey. Thanks for joining us. It's great to be talking to my hometown radio station. <laughs> ah, how about that? Hey, um, we wonder a lot of questions this morning. Uh, among them, does the publication of this book toss any unnecessary wrench into the Russia investigation? Why not wait until the investigation is over, until the Bureau has finished before you publish this book? Yeah, it's a reasonable question. I, and the answer is because my testimony is already locked down. I gave it under oath to the Senate a year ago, in fact, even before then, it was locked down because I wrote memos about key events. And so there really isn't a serious risk that I will, that my story will somehow change. It's it's in concrete, frankly, and I, I've offered it to the Senate and to the American people already. Some of the critiques of the book, even by people who may agree with your feelings about the president, think you took some cheap shots at him in the book to get under his skin, and that by doing that, you sort of seed some of the high ground that you may have had. Do they have a point? They don't, actually. And, and it, it's an indication to me that those folks haven't read the book. Because what I'm trying to do, I've never been an author before, but what my editors told me you have to do as an author is bring the reader with you. Show them the scene. Let them see it through your eyes. And so I describe in detail how Donald Trump seemed to me. I'm not trying to pick on the guy. I'm trying to describe what I saw. I also did that with my in the book about my first boss working in a grocery store. I describe him in great detail so you can picture him in your mind. I love that man. I'm not trying to pick on him either. If people read the book, I think they will see, in fact, I know they will see that kind of detail throughout it. And it's not, and look, I'm not trying to make fun of the guy's hands. I, I say in the book, I actually found them to be normal sized hands. It's about description, not doing anything that's, that's uh, underhanded or negative. Did you seek or did you need any clearance from the FBI or any other agency before you published the book? And have you gotten any feedback from the Justice Department about it? Of course. I'm I'm obligated as a former FBI employee to submit my manuscript, which I did for pre-publication review, to make sure there isn't classified information, to make sure there isn't sensitive investigative information. And so I, I... because I was the director of the FBI, I know what that kind of stuff looks like. So there wasn't any, but I submitted it to them for review, and that, that's the way it should be. When you talk to George Stephanopoulos responding to a question about Russia maybe having something on the president, you said that it's unlikely, even though we don't know for sure. Why is it so unlikely? It just seems far-fetched, the notion that the Russians would have a videotape of the president engaged like that in Moscow. I had to admit, look, it's possible, but it just seems um, fantastical and far-fetched. So that's why I say it's unlikely. You have raised the specter of obstruction of justice charges with the president of the United States. Some are asking, though, why wouldn't smashing of cell phones and the destruction of thousands of emails during an investigation clearly be obstruction of justice? Now, that's a great question. That's the first time I've been asked that. And and. The, the answer is it would depend upon what the intent of the people doing it was. It's the reason I can't say when people ask me, did Donald Trump commit obstruction of justice? My answer is I don't know. Could be. It would depend upon is there evidence to establish that he took actions with corrupt intent? So if you smash a cell phone, lots of people smash their cell phones so they're not resold on the secondary market and your personal stuff ends up in somebody else's hands. But if you smash your cell phone knowing that investigators want it and that they've cut a subpoena for it, for example, that is a different thing and can be obstruction of justice. The law requires intent? Yes, it requires not just intent, but that prosecutors demonstrate corrupt intent, which is a special kind of intent that you you were taking actions with the intention of of defeating and obstructing an investigation you knew was going on. You know, for your whole career, you were considered an example of being above politics and being professional in administrations of both parties. Given things that happened before the election and then since the election and now with the book, do you feel like you've undercut that image a bit? I hope not. I I think the actions I had to take before the election made everybody hate me on both wings of of our partisan divide. And I hope that's some indication that I'm not acting in a political way. I care about the public's trust. I don't care about politics. And I really appreciate these good questions. So let me, do you have time for one more? I I don't think I do. They're they're shaking their head at me. (laughs) Okay. We'd love to have you for longer, but obviously we'll give you up here. But uh, we appreciate having you come on with us this morning here on WTOP. Thank you.
Yeah, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. Come back anytime. Yeah. <laughs> Former FBI Director James Comey with us.